You, if you meet someone that's in a bad mood, nothing to do with you, it's about their lack of focus, their lack of connection, they're not in control of their mood. If you don't know this, if you haven't got this kind of conscious awareness, you could take it personally and think, oh, well, what have I done? And the more you do that, the more you disempower yourself. People want the solution. Thank you. Thanks. Network News Network has been selling and trading on new, new news for almost half a century. It is not just reality TV. It is reality itself. My name is Steve Surridge, Touch Life Productions. I previously spoke um, to Mike about uh, my community soap opera, Chalk Hill, Chalk Hill Lives. Um, since then, I'm currently working on a well-being web TV series called Living Life Larger. I had chronic fatigue for 15 years and I got myself out of it. So I'm now teaching the solution rather than the problem. The rest of the media is focused on the problem. Isn't life bad? Isn't life awful in the 21st century? Welcome to Network News Network. That ain't helpful to anyone's mindset. And one tool that's really benefited me, meditation. As I said, I've been doing it for the past 10 years. I do it every day. If I'm feeling a bit fatigued, I would do it then, so maybe two or three times a day. Um, and it's, all, it's the equivalent of when your mobile phone battery is low and you plug in the charger and you immediately see like the power bar going up telling you it's recharging it's that i've got a guided meditation from esther hicks abraham hicks and you can download these free from the internet they're on youtube and it basically it's a 15 minute guided meditation you're doing six deep breaths a minute and it's that process that calms you it's almost like all the negative build-up potentially that you could get throughout the day you just breathe out of you and you do it repeatedly so this positive talk that you're listening to it becomes your belief system so it's, it's programming yourself it's what affirmations do you're choosing certain thoughts that you repeat again and again and again and over time they become your default way of thinking my current project is living life larger which is a well-being web tv show uh, that, that has kind of evolved because I was, I've been a, a happiness coach, professional happiness coach for 10 years. Started doing that in Portsmouth in 2009. We were grant funded and we did workshops. We did um, residential retreats. So we worked with long term unemployed young people specifically. And we, did, uh, we took them away for a week. We did like residentials where they were doing like rock climbing and kayaking, archery, climbing, etc. And around those physical activities, which were fun and kind of outside the box, I'd do these thought management techniques, like, you know, make them aware of what, make them conscious of what they're thinking and how those thoughts make them feel. And it's a really simple, it's the Abraham Hicks philosophy, which changed my life, cured me of chronic fatigue, which I had for 15 years. In every option, we've got two choices. We can either think positive or negative. And I thought negatively for 15 years and it sucks the life out of you and you get sick, you get fatigued. So there's an a emotional indicator that you're thinking wrong. So if you think the other end of the stick and consciously train yourself to think, be optimistic, um, you know, just positive. And f you're not so much finding the positive thought, you're finding the good feeling thought. And if you do that, you're healing yourself. You're, you know, you become far more energized, you become happy, your life opens up. You know, you can't change reality, but you can always reframe your perspective on anything. I would um, get say 50 people sign up and then like 10 people would actually show, less than 10 people would actually turn up. So I did some market research and people said, yeah, it's too, I'm too afraid to show my face and talk about myself with strangers. So I immediately thought, okay, so what's the other way I can get the same information out there so people aren't afraid? And it's video. Luckily, you know, we have got YouTube now. We have got um, internet video access on our phones. So people can engage and absorb this information privately in confidence. This arena of well-being is so wide, only I've, I've got like a knowledge of a small part of it. So 
the content and the show has been shaped from people that I meet, that people that come to me and say, why don't you do a show on this? Why, you know, no one's tackled this. So it's interesting. I've recently sort of um, had some involvement with the Scientology Church. You met an SP. <laughs> yeah, they do spiritual counseling. Oh my God, it's the most powerful process I've ever gone through. And I actually now use some of their techniques in my drama training. It's all, of, again, it's about the mind, how you can manage the mind and reframe your perspective on trauma. <laughs> so, yeah, there's powerful stuff, which, you know, is like kind of, is not mainstream. And if I can get this show to bring this stuff to the masses and say, well, have you considered this? Uh, yeah, one of the, the next shows I'm planning as well is how, how to deal with trauma, how to overcome trauma. The mainstream media isn't telling us this. So when you watch stuff like EastEnders and um, the soaps, you know, still BBC and ITV, the old school, when they do a health storyline, they won't ever dare touch on sort of alternative therapies such as Reiki healing or, or you know, or positivity, you know, energy change. It was very much the traditional um, chemotherapy or whatever. And I think those, that's the old school. But I wanted to be a positive media producer. I wanted to present the solution, empower the audience, you know, inform and educate them with ways to improve their life. The establishment is crumbling and, you know, newspapers are now dead. Nobody's reading newspapers. The scheduled television is dead. It's only old people that watch that now. Um, I went to a conference with BBC last year. They admitted um, they've got no relationship with the audience under 35. I'd say probably 55 actually is the truth. For, I've had big ambitions in the video field since I saw Star Wars literally. And I remember when I was about 14 on the Isle of Wight, backwater Isle of Wight, Ride High School, I went and saw the careers advisor and they said, Steve, what do you want to be? And I went, Steven Spielberg. And they said, get realistic. And I'm like, no, I want to be Steven Spielberg. Someone has got to be the next Steven Spielberg. Come into, I think, to play big in the world and to really contribute, you have to sort out your shit first. And I think the way you do that is sort out your mind. We live in a negatively, you know, focused society and the mass media lead on that. And they put people up there on a pedestal and then they criticise and condemn and to cope with that and to have a confidence and certainty about your own personal creativity that you're sharing with the wider audience. Because to be creative does take courage. And the, the best creativity, you're digging deep and you're being vulnerable. I'm very much at one philosophy, spiritual philosophy, I'm very much into law of attraction. That's changed my life. That's the Abraham Hicks stuff, the secret stuff. And when you become conscious of what you're pulling into your life and what messages you're being given, that's when you realise there is a force, going back to Star Wars. <laughs> There's a force in this universe, again, which the mainstream media has never told us about. They were keeping us low energy. You know, it's, it's the same as the body. If you eat junk food, you become obese, the body breaks down, you get sick. It's the same with the mind. If you pollute the mind with junk, murder, negativity, nihilism, you damage yourself. The fix is simple but we're not being told it. Did I get Did the fix? Did you get the fix?